Hello everyone. Welcome back. In this presentation, let's focus on the ER diagram for hospital management system. In the last presentation, we have seen about the ER diagram for university database and banking enterprise. In this presentation, let's focus on hospital management system. In a university database, students and instructors are inevitable entities. In a banking system, Customer, loan, accounts are inevitable entities. What about hospital management system? Undeniably, doctors and patients. With a big salute to all the doctors who are helping our mankind, let's start creating the ER diagram from the doctor entity. Here is the doctor entity. What are the attributes of the doctor entity? The attributes are doctor ID, doctor name and the specialization. If you observe doctor ID alone, I am making it as the primary key attribute, whereas doctor name and specialization are normal attributes. You know why? Because there may be multiple doctors with the same name, with the same skill set or the specialization. Considering space constraints, I am just limiting this doctor entity with only three attributes, doctor ID, doctor name and specialization. However, in a real database, multiple important attributes needs to be recorded like the doctor's qualification, the experience, age, and many other fields. Okay, doctor is here. What about the next inevitable entity? Patient. When a hospital is concerned, we have two types of patients, inpatients and outpatient. We have separate entities for inpatient and outpatient. At first, let's start with the inpatient. Let's see what are all the attributes that are there. The attributes are admission ID, Admission date, patient name, gender. And this is not only for inpatient, we also have the similar attributes for the outpatient as well. The patient name, the patient ID, the doctor name. This outpatient is scheduled appointment for which doctor? And that's why we have given doctor name here. Also, additional fields are required like gender, from where they are coming from and many more. As you are aware, considering the space requirements, I am just projecting only few attributes. All right, we have the doctor entity, we have the patient entity where we have inpatient and outpatient. Now let's start building or constructing the ER diagram step by step. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to link this doctor entity with the inpatient entity. How? With a relationship. What is that relationship here? Attends. This doctor attends this inpatient. And doctor not only attends inpatient, Doctors also need to attend outpatients as well. So doctors have attends relationship with inpatients as well as outpatients. At first, let's complete this part. So doctor has relationship with the outpatient entity by using the attends relationship. Now here, many doctors may be engaged in many outpatients. And that is why I'm not restricting this with any one-to-one -one or many-to-one relationship. I have simply made it as many to many relationship. We are done with this portion. Let's now focus on this part. What we are going to do is we are going to establish the relationship between the doctor and the inpatient entities with the help of attends relationship. Now, here I made it as one to many. The reason is a doctor may attend many inpatients, but an inpatient must have at most one doctor. This is my requirement here. This need not be the requirement of all the hospitals. Alright, we have just established the relationship between doctors and the inpatient outpatient entities. Now let's start building the ER diagram furthermore. When we talk about inpatients, obviously we need to allocate or allot a room for the inpatients. For outpatients, that need not be the case. However, for inpatients, we need room. So we are bringing in another real world entity, room. And this room is actually described by attributes such as room ID, room number and room cost. Now we are going to establish the relationship between inpatient and the room. How? Using assigned. Inpatients are assigned to rooms. And what kind of relationship we can assign? In some hospitals, one room for one inpatient. There are some hospitals which may have one room shared by multiple inpatients. However, here, I am assuming it's a one-to-one -one relationship. One inpatient is with one room. So, one inpatient, one room. 
So I am just establishing one-to-one relationship here. All right, we have established the relationship between inpatient and the room. Now let's focus our attention towards this outpatient for a while. What I am going to do here is, I am going to bring in another entity, outpatient medical information. This is an important entity because every outpatient will have a medical record or a medical information. So I am going to now link the outpatient entity with the outpatient medical information with the help of some relationship. But before that, let's see what are the attributes that are described in the outpatient medical information. The attributes are outpatient medical ID, patient ID, medicine name. Now, how we are going to link this outpatient and outpatient medical information? With the help of a relationship. Obviously, outpatient is given an outpatient medical information. So, the relationship that I am going to maintain here is given relationship where it is one to many because the same outpatient may visit the hospital for multiple number of times for multiple different reasons. So, I am here maintaining one to many relationship. All right. For outpatient, we have outpatient medical information. Let's move towards inpatient now for a while. What we are going to maintain here is the inpatient medical information. And this inpatient medical information is also going to contain attributes such as inpatient medical ID, medicine ID, admission ID. Now, this inpatient medical information is going to be linked with inpatient entity. How? With the help of the same kind of relationship like outpatients. So I am going to maintain given relationship between inpatient and inpatient medical information. Let's see that now. I am going to make it as a one-to-many relationship between inpatient and inpatient medical information. We can see the ER diagram is being built up slowly. Now what we will do? We will turn our attention towards providing the service to the patients. At first, let's focus on inpatient medical service. So, the inpatient service, whatever the patient is taking, that is maintained in a separate entity. And what are the attributes here? The attributes are the admission ID and what kind of service name or what kind of service that is acquired by this inpatient. So, this is what the entity that deals with inpatient service. So, obviously, this inpatient is going to take this inpatient service. So, the relationship is, again, a given relationship between this inpatient and the inpatient service. Obviously, an inpatient may take multiple services or multiple diagnosis tests or multiple activities, isn't it? And that is why I am just going to maintain it as a one-to-many relationship. Fine, we have dealt with the inpatient service. What's next? When patients get the service, obviously they have to pay for the service that they have received. So the next entity I am going to maintain is the inpatient bill generation which is described by the attribute, the payment ID, the admission ID and the total amount. Now, who is going to be paying this? Obviously, the inpatient, isn't it? So, whatever the service that this patient has taken, that is going to be linked with this inpatient bill with the help of a relationship called generates. So, this inpatient service generates this inpatient bill. For each inpatient service, a separate bill has to be generated. And that is why I am going to maintain it as one-to-one. So here it is a one-to-one relationship for each inpatient service. Each bill should be separated. Fine. Inpatient bill is generated. Who will be collecting the money? Obviously, hospital need a cashier, isn't it? So I am bringing in the next entity called the cashier entity. What about the attributes of this cashier entity? Obviously, the staff ID, the first name and the destination. We may have multiple attributes for this cashier. However, I am just projecting only three attributes here. Now, this cashier is not only associated for this inpatient, he is also going to be associated for the bills generated for the outpatients as well. Again, it depends on the hospital. There may be a separate cashier section for inpatients and outpatients separately. Here, I am just considering the same cashier section is going to deal with both inpatients and outpatients. Now, what I am going to make is this cashier is going to collect payments from this inpatient, isn't it? So, this cashier entity is going to be related with this inpatient bill with the help of this relationship collects payment from. So, the cashier is going to collect the bill or the payment from this inpatient. 
and there may be multiple inpatient bills, the cashier needs to collect the payment for all the bills. And that is why here I am maintaining another one-to-many relationship. As I mentioned, this cashier's job is not to collect payment from only inpatients, also from the outpatients. So what I am going to do here is, there is going to be an outpatient bill like the inpatient bill which is exclusively for inpatient services. So the payment related to this outpatient bill is also going to be collected by the same cashier. So how the cashier is going to do is that this outpatient bill is going to be generated for all the outpatients as per their medical information, isn't it? So let's link this outpatient bill with this outpatient entity. But before that, let's see the various attributes of this outpatient bill. Like inpatient bill, we also have outpatient bill described by attributes such as admission ID, patient ID and the total amount. And this outpatient bill is for the outpatients, isn't it? So I am going to establish a PACE relationship between outpatient and the outpatient bill. And this is again one to one for each outpatient, a separate bill has to be generated. So at most one bill, one outpatient. We cannot have a single outpatient bill for multiple outpatients, isn't it? So that is why I am going to maintain one-to-one -one relationship between an outpatient and an outpatient bill. This is as like the inpatient service to the inpatient bill. Alright, you can see the ER diagram is growing up very nicely and beautifully. Fine, when outpatient is linked with the outpatient bill with the help of PACE, Obviously, cashier needs to take the payment from this outpatient, isn't it? So, the next relationship is collects payment from this cashier is going to collect the payment from this outpatient. And that is why a relationship is made like this. And this is a one-to-many relationship because the cashier may be collecting multiple outpatient bills. So far, we have seen about doctors, inpatient, outpatient and cashier related things. Are we forgetting one important entity in the hospital management system who are also inevitable entities in the hospital management system? Yes, the staff. So when we talk about the staff entity, this staff entity is described by attributes such as staff ID, first name, surname, designation. And the staff are going to be assigned for both inpatient as well as outpatient. Like doctors who are associated with inpatients as well as outpatients, Staff are also associated with inpatients and outpatients. And that is why staff are going to be registered with inpatient as well as they are going to be registered with the outpatient. Here I am going to maintain one to one relationship. However, as I already mentioned, this is all requirements based. We are almost done. Let's complete this ER diagram by bringing in another important entity to manage or administer the entire set of activities. Let's bring in the last entity, the admin entity, which is described by attributes such as username and user ID. You can have many other attributes for this admin. Considering the space constraints, I am just projecting only username and user ID. And this admin is going to be responsible for maintaining the records of everything, isn't it? Like staff, doctors and all other entities as well. But for now, I will just focus on maintaining the relationship between the admin and the staff and doctors. So admin is going to have appointment related relationship with both doctors as well as staff. One admin can maintain the records of multiple staff as well as multiple doctors. A doctor must have at most one admin. Similarly, staff must have at most one admin. And that is why the relationship between admin and staff or doctor is a one to many relationship. Just see how beautifully we have created an ER diagram for hospital management. If you observe, I have not focused much on primary key attributes. Let me give you an example. If you see here, room, room ID is going to be a primary key attribute here. So, I have not explicitly mentioned that. As I already mentioned, this is all requirements based, isn't it? And that is why my focus here is mainly to tell you how ER diagrams can be created. Now, if you compare the ER diagram with the previous two ER diagrams, I mean the university database ER diagram and the banking enterprise ER diagram, we can see this is following a different approach, but the fundamentals still remain the same. And that's why I mentioned there are multiple conventions that uses ER diagrams in a different way. However, 
we should have the strong fundamentals maintained always and in reality you know the real hospital management system deals with many more entities just to see i have not focused here on insurances or the branches of the hospital or the pharmacy section of the hospital laboratory sections scan centers and many other things i hope you will feel pride if you take up the role of a database administrator who is responsible for dealing with all these things before we sign out i'd like to emphasize on few things the relationship must be properly established let's say if an inpatient bill is generated with the help of an admission id please ensure that for an inpatient there exist an admission id information likewise for an outpatient bill is generated for a patient id please ensure something like patient id already exist this kind of things must be properly ensured while designing a database and that's it guys i hope the session is informative i'll see you in the next presentation and thank you for watching